Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be updating you guys on that tropical disturbance that is offshore of the southeastern United States. For today's comment of the day, I want to know how long do you think we have until our next tropical disturbance? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Outside of that, be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content, leave a like, and comment down below because those two things help me out so much. Thank you so much for that. Let's get straight into the video. First things first, the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook. We have our 50% chance still around offshore of Florida there. This storm is definitely not looking as healthy as it did yesterday morning, but we'll show you guys that in just a moment. Let's take a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and as you can see, nothing much changes here. 50-50 here, so we have a 50% chance there on the two-day, 50% chance there on the five-day, uh, and yeah, so there's, there's about a 50-50 shot of this one developing. Looking at yesterday's satellite imagery, this is what we woke up to yesterday morning, and it looked very intense. It looked like it was imminently going to become a tropical depression as of yesterday morning. But let's look at this morning, and oh my gosh, this storm is getting eaten up by the shear uh, and some of the dry air out there. The warm waters are not enough to really get this one's act together. It isn't too late now, and if it can find a favorable pocket, it could technically still develop, but just from yesterday morning to this morning, things are not looking that good uh, as far as just its chances to develop. So I'm surprised we're still at a 50% chance considering yesterday we were at the same percent chance. I think we're a lot more like a 30 or 40 at this point in my opinion, uh, but the National Hurricane Center still has that 50% chance on the two-day and on the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. Taking a look here at the European model's probability of tropical depression, we also see a significant drop in the percentage here. 10 to 20% chance where there was a 50 to 60% chance. So a huge, huge chunk of that probability has now just gone away. Uh, and this is four days, zero through three. Nothing goes up once you look at the three to six day outlook. So that is basically the highest this one has. Uh, probability of tropical storm is obviously zero to 10% chance considering probability of tropical storm is below 10% or sorry below 20% in between 10 and 20%. So obviously the probability of tropical storm isn't anything better. So at this point we're at an interesting stage with this storm. I think it's going to stay a tropical disturbance. It might become a tropical depression, but that's about it as it's very quickly going to approach Florida. We can expect numerous impacts as far as uh, some rainfall, a little bit of windiness as well, but it's mostly going to be nuisance impacts. We'll talk about that towards the end of the video as we look at the total rainfall and the total winds just to get you guys kind of informed on what we can really expect. But again, it's going to be more of like a nuisance type storm here that we can expect for uh, portions of Florida, Georgia, potentially up the East Coast, potentially into the Gulf still, but really mostly Florida at this point. What we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at the spaghetti model guidance according to all of our ensemble models uh, and then all of the models combined. And then we're going to start talking about impacts. All right, now here we are taking a look here at the GEFS model, which is our GFS ensemble models. And as you can see, northern Florida seems to be the kind of hot spot for a lot of these individual models here. We also see some there for Georgia. A lot of these have it curving up as well. So potentially hitting the northern half of Florida and then just moving northward from that point through into Georgia. This could potentially take it all the way up the east coast. It could potentially also move into the Gulf. You see a couple of those gray lines moving in there. That is an individual m member to this ensemble model that basically likes to take it there. So th there is still some probabilities of both of those scenarios happening, or it could just dissipate and really go away. The Canadian model, as you can see, still wants to go on a full world tour with this one. <laughs> so not dying out anytime soon, according to this model. This one takes it straight up through the Atlantic all the way to Europe. Uh, so very, very interesting there. A lot of these actually have it intensifying greatly as well out there in the middle of the Atlantic, possibly. Uh, impacting Atlantic Canada there as well. Very, very interesting scenario here from the Canadian model. It has been showing this for days while these models have not. So very interesting there. Here is all the individual models put together. Um, and as you can see, a, a great majority of these have it hitting northern Florida. There is quite a few that have it kind of taking a northerly track or northerly turn coming up soon and then hitting like South Carolina or potentially North Carolina. 
uh, but that seems to be the outlier at this point. A couple of these also have it kind of heading north through Florida into Georgia, doing a loop and then heading back south and then back into the Gulf. You can see those two that end up hitting Louisiana, but again, outliers at this point. Uh, so there is a lot of scenarios, but all we basically know for certain is that we do expect a northern Florida impact and then a move north into potentially Georgia. Georgia will feel impacts. That's I know that much at this point. Georgia will feel some windiness. They will get some rainfall uh, from this system. That is almost certain at this point. Now, what we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the modeled guidance. We're going to take a look at the accumulated maximum wind gusts and then also the total rainfall according to both the European and the GFS models, and then a little bit of a vorticity look. I'm also going to give you guys a sneak peek at the upcoming week or so uh, in the hurricane season, and just if we have any more waves heading off of Africa uh, in that time frame. All right, now here we are taking a look at the European models, total accumulated wind gusts. And as you can see, we can expect anywhere from the... Uh, Basically anywhere in the 20 mile per hour range there for the gusts, the upper 20 mile per hour range up for northern Florida, potentially coastal Georgia as well. So again, just a very nuisance storm under 30 mile per hour wind gusts. It could be enough to bring down some leaves and twigs, enough to be annoying, but not really enough to cause any significant damage, obviously. Total rainfall, we're looking at anywhere from about, I would say, a quarter inch to half an inch of rainfall for most areas, although I do expect downpours of up to an inch or more to be possible that is pretty much with any tropical system so I just want to put that out there that likely there will be some areas that do see some heavier pockets with these storms that are going to come with this tropical disturbance but as you can see all of southern Georgia there all of eastern Georgia and then pretty much all of Florida will feel some storminess from this tropical disturbance. Now the GFS model is kind of the same story a little less winds here we see lower to mid 20s there on the accumulated maximum wind gust. Uh, we also see that the total rainfall, it does kind of have those downpours I was talking about, kind of some spotty areas of above an inch, maybe even above two inches or three inches. Uh, so yeah, this, this model I think is handling the rainfall a little bit better because it just ha has that spottiness and that sporadic uh, areas of total rainfall that are obviously exceeding the surrounding regions. And this is a lot more realistic with a tropical system. All right, now for vorticity, and this shows us the large scale rotation in the atmosphere, just like a tropical cyclone would have. Uh, this is kind of around last night, what it was looking like. You can tell where it is, obviously, out there on the very right hand side of your screen. But then as it heads over Florida, you can see it weakens significantly. We see just not a lot of those reds and pinks, just mostly yellows and greens. Uh, so yeah, this is just not going to I, I don't think it's going to be a tropical, I don't even think it's going to be a tropical depression. There's obviously, like I said, probably a 30 to 40% chance according to what I think, uh, but most likely just a tropical disturbance at this point. Now, as far as waves off of Africa, within the next 33 hours, it looks like we will have one. If you look at Africa, it's kind of hard to see there, but towards the right hand side of your screen, right offshore, we see a little bit of a disturbance here on our vorticity. That one does not look like it's going to succeed at developing at all. However, we do have a time frame after, I think the, the date that I'm going to put is August 1st. I really think that's going to be our kind of transition date for when we're going to start seeing a lot more favorable times ahead for the tropical season, uh, which is just kind of a classic date for that to turn around because August is known as a big hurricane season month. September is known as a big hurricane season month as well. Uh, but just October, or sorry, August 1st, we see this one really uh, ramping up as we see pretty much back-to-back -back, uh, disturbances there. One is already offshore of Africa, and then one is onshore, about to head offshore. So this hurricane season could get going around the August 1st time frame. That is kind of in the medium to long range, so we're going to continue to track that with you guys. Probably need to make a hurricane season update for y'all pretty soon here in the coming days, so I will be delivering that very, very soon. For today's confidence tab, we're at a 6 out of 6. I just told you guys my thoughts, and I'm very confident in it. I think there's a kind of a chance it becomes a tropical depression, but I think this one is locked in as a tropical disturbance for the most part. We can expect anywhere from a quarter inch to half an inch of rainfall, pretty widespread, with some sporadic one inch plus amounts around for Florida and Georgia with those downpours that are possible. Also, pretty much gusts will be in the 20s, maybe even upper 20s, but more of a nuisance windstorm. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, 
Um, I asked you guys if it would be more likely to develop stronger in the Gulf or on offshore of the East Coast. I don't think it's even going to head in the Gulf, so I decided to pick this comment instead. What a weird storm. I definitely agree. This is a weird storm. This has been a very odd setup, and I enjoy it a lot. I actually love that. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Babenek, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lil the Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons. Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Gary's, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Crenenthal. If you would like to be a part of our patron industry today, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms One and Cat Bite as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out, and also be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.